Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Andrew. Today, I'm going to be walking through the pattern modifiers within the part design workbench. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to move over into the part design workbench and you'll find the tools I'm going to talk about today over here on the right of the tool ribbon. To start, we'll take a look at the mirror feature, which is the leftmost icon. The mirror modifier allows us to mirror one or multiple features on a plane. So in this case, I've got myself a chamfer, a simple counter bore and a hole. I've also set up a datum plane, which is in the center of our cube. I can either select all three of the features that I want to mirror onto this cube by selecting them and then clicking on the mirror icon. I can then select our plane by clicking select reference and select the plane like so. And as you can see, it is now mirrored on the opposite side of our cube. If I cancel that, I can also start the mirror operation by just clicking on the icon it will then prompt us to select a feature. If I select our first pocket and say OK, select our plane, select reference and select the datum, you'll see how it's projected just the one feature that we selected. If I then click on add feature and move over to the model tree, I can then select another feature such as the chamfer, which is then projected. I can then go back over, click add feature again and click on our second hole. I can also remove features by clicking on the remove icon, going over to our model tree and selecting what I want to remove. So as you can see, I have removed the chamfer from our counter ball. If I go back over to tasks, say okay to that, hide our datum plane, and you'll see that is now solidified into our solid. Over in our model tree, you'll see that a mirrored feature has been created. In this case, it doesn't matter what order our features are in, as they are all subtractive, compared to my second example, which has a subtractive and an additive geometry. So here I've got myself a cube with a cylinder on the side of it, and we've got a subtractive hole just going through the center of it. If I select our pad and our pocket, and I click on the mirror icon, you'll see how it has mirrored it perfectly. If I then alter this by clicking on our pocket and dragging that above our pad, you'll see how the geometry has changed. So what's happened here is it's created a pocket which goes for our cube and then what it's done is it's added a pad so that then the cylinder has now filled in what we've just subtracted. So in this case, having our features in the correct order can affect the outcome of our geometry. In this example, I've got myself a simple piece of geometry. I've added myself a circle just off center and I've also added this construction line. If I close out of that and click on our pocket, click on our mirror icon, and you'll see how it mirrors it on the YZ plane. If I go down to the plane and select construction line, it has now used our construction line, which we created in our sketch, as our mirror plane. If I click OK, go onto our sketch and make our mirror visible, you'll see that our circle has been created on the opposite side of our construction line. Moving on to the linear pattern, which can be found up here on our tool ribbon, the second icon in, you'll see that I've created this piece of geometry with a slot in it like so. It also has a chamfer on both sides. I'm gonna click on our pocket, I'm gonna click on the linear pattern, and you'll see that now that a second slot has been created in the X axis. Our left parameters box is slightly different to the mirror modifier. At the bottom, we have a reverse direction, which can be toggled on and off. So our length is currently set to 100. And basically what that is, is from the center of our slot here to the center of our slot here, that is 100 mil wide. The slot I've created is 10 millimeter in width, and the center of that slot is offset from the edge by 10 mil. So if I set this to 180, because our panel is 200 mil long, you'll see we'll have a slot on both sides that is exactly 10 millimeter from the centers to the edge of our part. As you'll see, our occurrences are set to two. And if I start to up that, say six, you'll see that the gap in between has now been filled with even more slots. You'll also see here that this one has a chamfer going around the outside of it. That's because I've only selected the pocket as our feature. If I click on add feature, go to our model tree and select chamfer, this will now be projected onto our other slots. 
Now in 0 0.18, you can't actually do this. You have to create different patterns for different features. So now that this has been added into 0 0.19, it's made things so much easier and so much quicker. The order is also important depending on the kind of geometry you are creating, similar to the mirror and polar patterns. If you are looking to create loads of occurrences, then it's better to use the draft array within the draft workbench, as this is a little more optimised for handling larger numbers. Linear patterns must inset with the base shape, keeping it as one solid. Anything that isn't connected will just be deleted. For instance, if I set the length of the linear pattern to 200mm and the occurrences to 10, you'll see that only 9 slots made it on our geometry. In 0.18, they highlighted the part that was not connected in red, but it looks like they've gotten rid of that, which is a little annoying as it was a really good indicator and just visually easy to see what the problem was. Creating a polar pattern is pretty much similar to the previous two tools. You either select your feature or features before selecting the tool, or you can do that after. So here I have myself a pad in the shape of a circle, and I also have a slot. If I go over to the model tree and select pocket, I can then click on our polar pattern, which is the third icon in, up here on the tool ribbon, and I can click that, and it will bring up our control panel on the left. You'll see that everything is exactly the same as the previous tools, in that we have this box here that we can add and remove features. We have our axis, we have reverse direction, which I'll come to in a second, we have our angle, which determines how much our occurrences rotate, and we also have our occurrences. So if I set our occurrences now to 10, you'll see that it is rotated fully round our part. If I set the angle to 180, you'll see how it only covers half of our part. If I then click on the reverse direction, you'll see that instead of going counterclockwise, our pattern now goes clockwise. Similarly, depending on the geometry you have, this pattern is currently going around the z-axis, but we can also have it going around the y-axis and the x-axis depending on our shape. The same limitations to this tool apply as they do to the others. For another example of multi-transformation, I have a pad in the shape of a circle, and I also have another pad in the shape of a small circle. I'm then going to select the pad, click on our multi-transformation, and I'm going to right-click down in our transformation box. I'm going to add a linear pattern, and as you can see, our shape will disappear. Now I've also found just by clicking on the actual axis themselves, it doesn't seem to change. So if we click on the direction and say base X, you see how it has gone to the right of our pad, which is where we don't want it, we want it on the left. Now another thing is if I was to set this to a minus, it wouldn't work. It would give us a message up here that says pattern length too small. So I'm going to set this back to a positive, and I'm also going to set this to 150mm length. I'm going to click on the reverse direction so that it comes to the left of our pad and I'm going to set the occurrences to 3. I'm then going to click OK. As you see we now have 3 of these smaller cylinders and I'm now going to right click and click on Add Scale Transformation. Now you'll see that our part has disappeared and we've also now got a transformation message up here that says number of occurrences must be divisor of previous number of occurrences. Basically what that's saying is in our linear pattern, we set the occurrences to 3, and so the occurrences in our scaled transformation also need to be 3. So if I set it to 3, you'll see transformation succeeded, and I'll press OK. Now you'll see that our cylinders are now getting bigger. The factor, if I double click on that again, the factor is the scale multiple we want our final cylinder to be. So in this case, I have started with a 20mm diameter circle, and our final cylinder will be 40mm diameter. The occurrences in between will be scaled accordingly. So this one here is 20mm diameter, and this one here is 40mm diameter, which probably means this one's about 30mm diameter. So I'm going to click OK to that. I'm going to right click and add polar pattern. Again, I'm going to select on the axis, Z, because I want it to revolve around our Z axis. Again, that depends on the geometry you've got yourselves, so you can click on the Y or the X. I'm going to keep it as 360 degrees on the angle, and I'm going to set the occurrences to 6. And press OK. You'll see now that we've added multiple transform and pattern features just using one tool. If I say OK to that, and go back into the previous sketch, and I add a circle in the middle, I'm going to set the radius of that to 5mm, 
and I'm going to close out of that. You'll see that our entire geometry has been updated. So I've still got the same circular peg with a hole going through the center of it. I've now added a square hole, which is going through on the Y, and I've also added a chamfer on the outside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select by holding control the chamfer pocket, which is the square pocket, and the pad. I'm then going to click on the multi transformation tool. Again, this is just easier for me to select all of the features first and then click on the tool. I'm going to click on the multi transformation tool and you'll see that our features are added to our parameters box. Now I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a linear pattern and you'll see what the problem is. If I click on base X, you'll see that none of our patterns or none of our features have been transposed onto our new part. Now the reason for that is because the chamfer and the pocket are first and the pad itself is then last. So basically what it's done is it's pocketed thin air and then added a pad. So it's not actually uh, put the features that we wanted to on the geometry that we've created. So the way we do this is click on the pad, drag it above the pocket and the chamfer. You'll see that it's now altered our new piece of geometry. So again, I'm going to reverse the direction. I'm going to set the length to 150 and I'm going to set the occurrences to 3. I'm going to say OK to that and zoom out. I'll show you very quickly. If I select them in the opposite order, so pad, pocket, chamfer, so an additive geometry and then adding the two subtractive geometries and then clicking on the multi transform, you'll see that they've been added in order. So the order that you click them in is definitely very important when it comes to subtractive and additive geometry. So now that we've got our three pieces of geometry in a linear pattern, I'm going to right click and add a scale transformation. Now, now you'll see we come up with an error because we haven't got the occurrences set to free. So I'll set that to free. And I'm also going to set the factor to free as well. I'm going to press OK and you're going to see something slightly different. So you'll see how our third piece of geometry in our linear pattern has scaled up three times to our original piece of geometry and how the square has actually cut into our base geometry. So I'm just going to leave that as it is now because I want to see what happens. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a polar pattern. I'm going to set the base to Z. I'm going to set the occurrences to 6 and there we have it. You'll also see how the square holes affect all of our other geometry. I was wondering why these square holes are actually going through all parts of my geometry. So including, you know, going through the larger ones up here from the, the slightly medium ones here. And the thing about that is because I think it's because I set the square pocket to through all. So for my final example, here I have a cylinder and I've taken something from a previous tutorial that I did uh, a couple of months ago. So what I've got here is I've just got a slot which revolves around our cylinder. It's got a chamfer on it and it's got a radius in four corners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the pocket, fill it and chamfer again in that particular order because you want it to pocket then fill it and then chamfer. I'm then going to click on the multi transform tool. You'll see that they've been added to the parameters box. I'm going to right click, add a linear pattern and as you'll see here compared to the others this is the red sort of outline or the red transparent object that I was on about earlier. I'm going to reverse the direction and I'm also going to set our direction to base X. I'm going to keep the length as 100 and I'm going to set the occurrences to 6. Now you also notice that we have these obscure random lines which have also sort of created faces. Basically this is where I have pocketed um, and then added a radius on by the looks of it uh, but we can clean these up in just a moment. So I'm going to say OK to that and I'm going to right click and add a polar pattern. For the purposes of lag, I'm going to turn off update view. I'm going to right click, add polar pattern, set the axis to base X, keep the reverse direction off, keep the angle as 360, and I'm going to set the occurrences to 4. And then I'm going to say OK, and as you'll see, it's done like this. I also notice the update view doesn't actually seem to work. So uh, there's that, that's something else I've just learned. Um, so as you can see, we've still got the random lines going around our part. So if I say OK to that, click on our multi transform, and you'll see that refine is set to false. If we then click on that, 
we can set that to true. Click back onto our geometry and you'll see how it removes those random lines and faces, creating a cleaner looking part. Something else I've also noticed is that the origin seems to stick around or it's highlighted after you've created it. So you can just click on that, press the space bar and that will hide that. And that will be all for today's tutorial. Hopefully I've taught you something new or explained something that you might not have understood originally. I've tried to go into detail about many features as possible, hence the long video. So hopefully it's not too confusing to follow. If you are stuck, check out the free CAD Wikipedia links in the description or drop a comment in the comment section and I'll see if I can help. I think being able to select multiple features and transform them all at once is fantastic. It makes creating so much easier and I personally think it adds a more professional touch to FreeCAD. It's a little annoying when it doesn't tell you that a piece of geometry is connected. I think if this has been removed it definitely needs to be brought back as this is a great visual indicator. It allows us to understand very quickly that something isn't correct. If you like the video give it a thumbs up and if you dislike the video give it a thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it and as always have an epic rest of your weekend and I'll see you in the next video.